uh, go on to the topic of when a person should get married because we didn't we I, I didn't cover that so I added this to my notes of you know when should a person get married how old should you be before you know God wants you to be married and encourages that well let's look at a couple of passages because I think in the Bible <coughs> five eighteen. Because I believe in the Bible, God encourages us to get married when we're young. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's a commandment. So I don't think people are sinning if they don't marry young because God doesn't command you to get... Because if he commanded you, that means if you didn't get married young, um, then it would be a sin. But we can definitely see passages that encourage us to be married young. And I'll go over a couple of advantages of why you would want to get married young. Uh, it says here in Proverbs 5.18, it says here, Let thy fountain be blessed. Uh, maybe we'll just read a couple of other verses because it talks about, um, you know, Proverbs 5 is talking about adultery and, 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 you know, being with your own wife rather than with somebody else's. It says here, Drink waters out of thine own cistern. So it's using this analogy, right, of, um, of um, drinking and obviously it's talking about a relationship with a, between a husband and wife. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountain be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. And look at this. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. So the wife of thy youth. So the wife, when you were young, you got married. Um, look here in uh, Psalms 127. This is a psalm about, um, I, I believe this whole psalm is actually about family. We'll just read the whole lot just because it's short. It's like, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So the house, I believe, referring to your family. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the room, womb is his reward. And look at this, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. So obviously God would want us to be a mighty man. He, want us, he wants us to have you know, a quiver full of arrows. We see here later on, happy is the man that have his, have his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. So I believe God, you know, he wants us to have a lot of children. He wants us to have as many children as possible. That's why he wants us to have a quiver full. And it was an interesting point that Kevin brought up that you know, every, everyone's quiver is a different size. So God is not setting a number on how many children he wants you to have, but everyone has a quiver. But I do think God is encouraging us to have as many as that quiver can hold because he wants us to have a quiver full. But it says, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. So we can see there that uh, having children young is something that is uh, mentioned in the Bible. Uh, look here in 1 Corinthians 7. Verse 36, a passage about marriage as well. But I just wanted to point this verse out to you in verse 36. And we sort of touched on it um, last week. It says here, But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely towards his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and needs so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. So, see, the, the requirement there is just that she's past the flower of her age. And we, we would believe that to be that she's ready for childbearing. She, her, 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 you know, she's menstruating, she's got a period, and she's able to bear children. So that, that's the cutoff there. It's saying if she passed the flower of her age, it doesn't say, you know, if she's, um, if she's finished school or if she's, you know, graduated or if she's, you know, if she's um, already worked and, and, and is stabilized financially. Because, you know, the reason why the world wants us to do that is because they don't value, they don't value being a mother. You know, they think that a value comes from working a job and making money. But see, in my, the perspective I think we should have is the only reason why we need to go out and make money is to provide for our family. Because if you think about it, the, the reason why we're created is to enjoy God, right, and to serve God, but to be fruitful and multiply, like why, when God created us in Genesis. And God loves children. And, and there are many reasons why um, God wants us to marry young. One is, is so that we can have more children, right? Because if you marry young, the more children you can have. Um, 
But somebody obviously needs to provide for those children and that's why the husband goes out and works and provides for his family. So I do think that God encourages us to marry, marry young, uh, pass, the flower, pass the flower of our age. But another reason why it's a good idea to marry young, um, we'll just go a bit further up in the chapter. But the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 7, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But verse 9, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. So not only is the world trying to you know, push out marriage because you know, they want to put women into, women into the workforce and they want to basically you know, get our children into government schools and then teach them and indoctrinate them with the world instead of families raising their children and, and women raising their children and raising uh, you know, a lot of children. Um, I believe that they've lost that value system and you know, we should fight that. But also, when you push out marriage, you go many more years being celibate. You know, because obviously you shouldn't be fornicating before you're married, but God has put a natural instinct in us to desire that act between a man and a woman to encourage us to get married. And what happens when, when people pull it out? This is why so many people are fornicating these days and fornicating outside of wedlock because they have that desire but then they don't think they should get married until much later on and then they end up fornicating. And this is not just for men. This is for women as well. I mean, sometimes we don't think of women as burning with lust, but women also do. They may not burn as much as men do, but they do. And this is the reason why women also fornicate because it's a natural desire. There's nothing wrong with the desire to be with a man or to be with a woman, um, but that's why God you know, uh, wants us to get married and that's why we get that desire quite young in life and not in, you know, our late 20s, late 30s because he wants us to marry young. That's what I believe. Um, but, you know, what are, there, what are some other advantages um, to, to marrying young? Well, number one, I just listed a couple here. Number one, you know, it's easier for ladies, you know, because, you know, there's no secret that when a lady is younger, you know, she's more attractive. It's easier for her to find uh, a husband um, and I, you know and whilst I don't think that should be the main thing that a husband in look, is looking for it's just a natural thing it's a natural thing that a man is going to be attracted to his wife and a younger a lady is generally the more attractive she is too so it's easier for her but sometimes what happens in the world and in life is ladies put it off because they, they're trying to go through their studies or they're trying to, to work and then they don't get married until they're like mid 30s but now they're wondering who, who would like to go after them because they're not as attractive as they used to be. And when they were younger, many guys were going for them. So they had a lot of suitors when they were younger and now that they're older, there are not many suitors because all the guys that were looking for, um, for, for a wife have, have gotten with, a, with another lady. Um, so that's, that's one reason. It's easier for ladies. Uh, another reason would be you know, when, when you're younger, you're less set in your ways. You're less set in your ways doctrinally, you're less set in your ways habitually, and it's easier sometimes to get along with somebody when you're younger and grow together as opposed to get to an age where you're already set and it's hard to, harder to find somebody that fits exactly um, what you've become. Uh, another thing would be, you know, when you're younger, there are more options because as people grow older, naturally they're starting to, to hook up and to yoke up and there are less options there. Um, another one would be, uh, that I've already mentioned, is that you can have more children. <coughs> and the last one I've just got here is, <coughs> if you get married younger, you're, you will be younger when your children are older. Because I, I remember I knew somebody in Perth, and he had children quite late, and he was always thinking about, you know, when my children are teenagers, he's going to be like in his 50s. You know, and he's not going to be able to keep up with them as easily as if he was in his 30s. You know, and especially, you know, young babies, they too take a lot of energy. So, you know, it is good if you um, go through it when you're a lot younger rather than being a lot older. 